Beloved, you are welcome to another episode of the way of salvation. I believe that you are learning deep things from the word of God. Today we are here again to learn more from the word of God. I told you last time that the sin that demons are causing human beings to indulge against God is to break his word. So do your best as someone who is the child of God not to break his word. But do whatever he tells you. Amen. Okay, today let's turn our Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 6, and I'll read from verse 13. Matthew, chapter 6, verse 13. The Lord was teaching the disciples the Lord's Prayer. And I want to show you something deep from that prayer. Verse 13 says, And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, according to the prayer, the Lord taught the disciples and subsequent followers, there are deep things there and lessons to be learned, especially in this era of the coronavirus. According to the last sentence of verse 13 it says that human beings you understand certain things that I, if I bring it from the end to the beginning the last I mean the last sentence it means that some things belong to God forever some things belong to God forever the Lord was telling the, uh, the disciples and Christians that there are some truths we need to get them deep into our spirits that certain things belong to God forever. And those things that belong to God forever are the things I want to propound today. And one of the things I want to look at is about the word kingdom. Hallelujah. The word kingdom. The Lord wanted mankind and Christians to understand that God's kingdom is the everlasting one. It is the kingdom that remains forever and ever. That is what the Lord wanted every mankind, every Christian, every person to understand that God's kingdom abides forever and ever. Now, what is a kingdom? A kingdom is a state with a king or a queen as the head. So, when you have a king or a queen over a state as the head, that is what is termed as a kingdom. Therefore, the Lord is telling us that God is also a king and his kingdom abides forever. That is what the Lord Jesus was telling every Christian who prayed to God to understand that God's kingdom remains forever. He is the king whose kingdom abides forever. Now, Another thing that the Lord Jesus wants people to understand is that if God's kingdom is the one that abides forever, then the kingdoms of the earth 
which are only a carbon copy of his, remain temporary. You see, if God's kingdom is the one that remains forever, what the Lord Jesus wanted to convey is that every other kingdom remains temporary. That's what you need to understand. So the next difference is that God's kingdom, if it remains forever, the next thing we should see and accept to understand is that God is the only king who can supply all the needs of his subjects forever. God is the only one who can do that. He's the only one who can cater for his subjects forever. Now, the earthly kingdoms cannot do that because the heads of such states are only human. I'm talking about the kings and the queens who may rule over such people. They are only human. So they remain temporarily. God is the only one who can cater for his subjects in his kingdom forever. An example is how he fed the whole Israel on the desert. He collected some people. They became his people. He named them Israel. And on the desert, he was able to provide manna from heaven to feed all of them. Hallelujah. That means we are talking about an awesome king who has the ability to feed all his subjects forever. That is an example of what happened on the desert. He was able to rain food, manna, for all Israel to be fed. Here on earth, no human king or human queen can cater for his or her subjects and feed them forever and ever. Nobody can do that. That I want to feed every person in my kingdom. We cannot even do that for one month. Let alone forever and ever. God is the only king who can supply the needs of all his people. Therefore, it is important to say that the true kingdom is God's and not that of human which he created. We need to understand that one. So that is what is expected of us at this time of the coronavirus. This introduction I've just made is what is expected of us in this time of the coronavirus. What do I mean? It is at this time that presidents and prime ministers and royalties of nations it is at this time that they are sinning against God. That is the time of the coronavirus. What do I mean by that? Instead of relying on the spiritual kingdom, I'm talking about God's kingdom, to solve the needs of the physical kingdom, they have relied on the physical one. They have relied on themselves to push God away. Let me say it again. If the Lord Jesus was teaching humanity that there is a kingdom that abides forever, that can feed all the subjects at every time, then in this time of the coronavirus, what God expects of us is that human beings, earthly kings, earthly queens, should consider saying that we need to rely on the spiritual kingdom in order to solve the physical needs or the spiritual needs of the people in the kingdom. But if you rely, if you rely on the earthly kingdom to solve the earthly problems in your kingdom, it will not be possible because coronavirus is a spiritual problem. So it is at this time that you need to rely on the spiritual kingdom to come down and solve the spiritual problem. So what God expects of the royalties of the earth, the presidents of the earth at this time is, simp is simply this. 
you simply have to say, Lord, at this time of the coronavirus, let your kingdom come. Hallelujah. Let your kingdom come. That is what the Lord meant in that simple prayer he taught the disciples. If you can say, Lord, what is going on is a spiritual problem. What is going on has overwhelmed us. We are only human beings presiding over states you have uh, conferred on us or you have put us over. But please, Lord, you are the king forever. So come in and solve this spiritual problem because we are only human. This is what God expects of, of us. Instead of doing this, we are trying to take credit for ourselves. Pushing the kingdom of God away and trying to solve issues by our own selves. And that is not what God expects of us. It is not what is expected of us at all. So if national leaders will put God in charge of their countries by saying thy kingdom come, God will come in and deliver them from all their troubles. Every spiritual trouble that you may encounter and you are truly encountering at this time, if you invite God and let the kingdom of God come in, he will come in to solve all your spiritual problems. But politics and democracy have taken over theocracy. Politics. This is a very important quote I want to tell you. Politics and democracy have taken over theocracy. What I mean is that human kingdom has taken over the spiritual kingdom. Human kingdom has taken over God's spiritual kingdom. That is, they are struggling with the issues of which the coronavirus is one. The human kingdom has taken over the spiritual kingdom. What I mean is that physical kingdoms are trying to be in charge of spiritual issues of which only the spiritual kingdom can handle. Hallelujah. If an issue is spiritual, you that is, that, that is in charge of a nation, if you are only human, you cannot solve a spiritual problem. I've been telling you uh, most of the time in the episodes. So if you take charge of the spiritual issue, you can never solve because you are only human. Invite the spiritual kingdom by saying, let your kingdom come in and into our land. And you'll see the difference. What I mean is that if you can invite God into the spiritual kingdom, you as the head of state, you as the king, you as the queen. If you can say, Lord, come into this spiritual circumstance. God will come in as a spiritual king to solve your issues. And you'll see the difference. You'll see the difference. Every nation that invites God's kingdom to be their backbone, see his blessing, his deep knowledge and protection. When God is in charge spiritually, the nation is powerful. But without God, demonic abominable deeds are visible. Hallelujah. Without God, I'm saying that demonic abominable deeds are visible. Because demons don't want nations to test God's blessings, they have taken over the minds of some politicians to enact laws that will rise against God for his blessings to elude them. What I mean is that demons don't want you and your countries to see the blessings and the glory of God and protections of God and the protection of God. So they are pushing you to take over 
by enacting laws that will push God away. You will never see his glory. By pushing the kingdom of God away, look at what is happening to the nation. Because they are pushing the kingdom of God away. Look at what is happening to the nations of the earth. And so I'm here to tell every nation, if you want to see the glory of God, please, don't reject the kingdom of God, which is the spiritual one, but embrace it and see the difference. If you want to see the glory of God, please embrace the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God and you will see the difference. Because as I said earlier, God's kingdom is so sweet to be a subject in. As he demonstrated on the desert, he was able to feed his people with breakfast. That was manna. He was able to feed his people with quid. That is meat. So God is able to feed his people twice a day. Hallelujah. So if you are encountering crisis, as at this time of the coronavirus, it is good to say simply, Lord, let your kingdom come. Because I am only human. You are the best king who can supply all the needs of the people in this kingdom. Hallelujah. If you do that, you really know what I mean. God is willing to protect and solve your spiritual problems if only you invite him in. If you invite God into this physical problem, he's willing to protect and solve all your spiritual problems. All you need to do is what I said. You have to say, Lord, let your kingdom come. And no plague will come near you. If, it, if his kingdom comes in, no plague will come near you. Because look at what happened on the desert. God was demonstrating what happens in his kingdom. God was demonstrating that. For 40 years, the people in his kingdom wore the same shirt. The same dress. For 40 years old. The same shoe. The same shirts. None of them was taken to any clinic or hospital. So the, the medical doctors who are taking credit in the kingdoms of the earth now. In God's kingdom, you are nothing. Because he himself is the healer. It is only in the earthly kingdoms that medical doctors are pushing the heads of states. Left, right, front, back and around. But in God's kingdom, which abides forever, he himself is the healer. So on the desert, none of his subjects were sick for Moses to take them to any medical doctor. They were healthy. He fed them and they were healthy. So my message is simple. If you want to see the, king, the glory of God, if you want to see God's protection in your nation, at this time of the coronavirus, if you want him to come and solve this spiritual problem, invite him. The president, the king, the queen, just, just gather true men of God and say, Lord, let your kingdom come. And God will come in and solve every spiritual problem. Because you have invited his kingdom, you will see that you can join me and say that with God, all things are possible. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you have been enlightened. To hear more, you may subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to see more videos. Patsu Kukudatsi has written a very informative book called How Demons Operate. Grab yourself a copy to know how they operate and know how to liberate yourself from demonic oppression. To stay in contact with us, you can reach us through these details. God bless you.